Of the genre movies coming out in the next little bit, one of the most anticipated is definitely Boy Kills World, which had a trailer leak a couple of weeks ago. It was quickly taken down, but boy, it sure did whet our appetite and promised an epic action throw odd unlike any we've seen in theaters in a little bit. Sure enough, I was able to see the movie early at the Toronto International Film Festival, where it premiered as part of the Midnight Madness lineup. So in it, Bill Skarsgård plays a deaf and mute warrior who's been raised by a mysterious shaman played by the raid's Yayan Ruhian so he could topple a repressive regime. Now, earlier this year, Bill Skarsgård played a suave villain in Keanu Reeves' John Wick Chapter 4, but notably stayed out of the action scenes. Had the movie been released after Boy Kills World, I think the part would have been radically reimagined, with the actor putting himself through the kind of physical transformation that changes careers. Watching the hulking 6'3 actor blast his way through opponents in Boy Kills World, it's hard to believe that the same guy, just a few years ago, was best known as Pennywise the Clown. Indeed, Boy Kills World is the perfect launch pad for Bill Skarsgård to become a major action hero. The movie itself is pretty wild dystopian action epic with heavy doses of black comedy and outrageousness mixed in. While Skarsgård's character is a mute, he narrates the film by his inner monologue, which has the actor affect a voice the character heard in an arcade game he liked to play before he lost his hearing. The character is also shown to be a master lip reader, something which is used for comedy when he encounters Isaiah Mustafa's character, who is a particularly mumbly ally who he just cannot understand. The action in the movie kicks off early with the premise being that the titular boy is an orphan after his family was killed by the minions of his city's evil ruler, Hilda Vanderkoy, played by Thamka Jansen. Every year, the Vanderkoys have a ritualistic culling where they murder civilians live on TV. The boy has himself taken so that he can kill his way to Hilda, with him facing off with Hilda's son Gideon, played by Brett Gelman, and her two daughters, Melanie, Michelle Dockery, and June 27, played by Jessica Roth. The latter is an LED helmet-wearing badass whose skills rival boys, as does her physique with Roth wearing a midriff-bearing jumpsuit that shows off her shredded abs. Suffice to say, the movie is filled with action, with it being a mixture of hand-to-hand -hand and gunplay, most of which seems to be done by Skarsgård himself. Some of the gore sprinklings of producer Sam Raimi's Evil Dead worked in, perhaps. One of the most notably disgusting bits involves Boy using a box grater in a gory scrap, and another highlight is a hand-to-hand -hand fight where his opponent keeps losing parts of his body but keeps fighting. Of course, the action is way, way, way over the top, with it a hard R-rated actioner by design. The cast is unique in that neither Skarsgård nor Roth are action veterans, making them feel like fresh choices to lead a movie like this. Andrew Koji is also cast against type in a mostly non-fighting role as a motormouth resistance member who teams up with Boy while Shoto Copley also shows up to choose some scenery. Everyone seems to be relishing their chance to amp up the madness, especially Dockery in a role that's far removed from her iconic turn on Down Abbey. She looks like she's having a blast. Yayan Ruhian from the Raid movies has his most prominent role in a North American movie to date as the boy's mentor, with him participating in the film's best fight sequences, which seems a given. Overall, I had a total blast with Demented Actioner, which seems poised to become a cult hit following its debut at Midnight Madness. Director Moritz Moore has made an impressive debut with the film including enough world building that it could easily spawn a franchise. Hopefully a distributor steps up and gives this a theatrical release as it feels like the type of movie that's best enjoyed with an audience. And for my part, I had a blast giving it a strong 8 out of 10. Now, if you'd like to hear a little bit more about how Boy Kills World came to be, we've got an exclusive interview with the producer, Roy Lee. And I'm excited to hear what the min how the Midnight Madness crowd receives the movie. It's it's been exploding on Joe Blow. We we've been running stories about it, and the and the traffic has just gone through the roof every time we've. That's talked. awesome because I've seen it so many times that like yeah. I've sort of lost perspective of it. As you, you know, as you can understand, since it had so much voiceover, we had to play around with it a lot, and so it's been constantly evolving. Well, I love his voiceover in the movie that it's like this video game that a kind of kind of thing, which I thought was a, a pretty novel way to 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 tackle that. Did you see the short film that he did done before um, making this movie? No, I didn't even know that he had done. No, I had no. Oh, okay, so, like it is. That's what it got everyone so excited about making the movie yeah. is because he actually shot a trailer for the movie. That was essentially a short film, but it was it was a trailer, so it was like bits oh, and wow. pieces of what you would see, and uh, it's uh, it just showed you what the movie could be. And uh, I I put it on my Twitter account like last year, so if if you go on my Twitter, you might be able to see it. I don't know if it, you know sometimes they take videos down or something like God, it might not be there anymore. I'll for sure check it out. Um, it's kind of interesting because it's a, it, I was I was looking over your filmography and particularly the stuff that you and 
Sam Raimi have done together, it's a bit of a departure for you guys because it's not it's not horror. It's it's a like a real like legit action movie. Um, was that what what kind of brought you guys to 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 producing this film? It's more about looking for um, new directors that we discover through short films and and like initially. Uh, Sam and I had been developing Fetty Alvarez's um, Panic Attack, and uh, we just watched other short films and decided to take it shot with certain directors. And uh, Moritz, even though the short film wasn't a horror short, it was it was interesting enough and uh, exciting enough for us to say, let's try this one. Well, I was blown away by Bill Skarsgård's physical transformation, and I was I was just writing my review of it, and it, it feels like the kind of role that'll totally transform a career and, and and make him into an action star it's great it's it's honestly you you don't think of him anymore as pennywise like it's it, it's hard to even imagine that those two guys are the same actor when you watch him in this movie it was a pretty drastic change of he got a trainer and worked out because like the movie he did right before this was barbarian which yeah you, when you saw if you've seen that he's not as as buff and, and built out as he was in this one it's, this one he, he had a trainer in sweden that he ended up bringing with him to uh south africa where we shot the movie and how much of the fight scenes and the choreography was he able to do himself? Because it looked, because I mean, even if he was doubled, it looked pretty convincing. It looked like it was him a lot of the time. It was him a lot of the time. And he was doing lots of training. So, and there were some moments where he had to use a double, but uh, uh, he, as much as he could, he was definitely being the person there. Because uh, as you saw him, he, like he definitely did the, the training to make him look like he could play the part. Well, I also really liked Jessica Roth in 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 that role, um, and and I know that she was kind of a last minute replacement. Um, how do you how do you squeeze somebody in though to like such an elaborate action movie, kind of at the eleventh hour? Because I know that she she signed on to the film pretty close before you guys started filming, right? And she was I thought she yes. was terrific. It was, she went as, as quickly as she could and started training. I mean, it was the the timing was was pretty bad because of the the COVID issues. But like once everything was cleared up, she was there and she was she was fit and trained. So she was. Uh, it, it, we just had to make do with what we had. Well, I mean, shooting an independent film, and I, and I would I would call it an independent film in the in the middle of a pandemic. How much of a challenge was that? Because when you watch the film, it looks like you've got like this huge cast of, of of extras and stuff. Like it looks pretty epic and elaborate. It was very difficult, but it it was something that there there were times that we had to be extra cautious. But uh, it it uh, it definitely added some time. But it, hopefully, the audience won't be able to tell that there were lots of. Uh, trims made to the, the the crew and the cast to, just to make it feel like, uh, I mean, to be able to be as safe as possible, but still make it feel like a big movie. No, I couldn't tell at all. And 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 there were, there were a couple of jokes that I thought were particularly clever. One thing that kind of drives me nuts in movies is how a lot of actors really are into mumbling their dialogue nowadays. And I, I love yeah. that I say of Mustafa's character, He's a mumbler, so you can never really. So he's, so he's just mis misunderstanding what he's saying the whole film. I thought that was great. Yes, that was that was a very funny part of it. Yes. <laughs> um, I also I I have to say the casting was 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 really interesting for this one. But one of the choices I think that really kind of threw me for a loop because I'm used to seeing her on Downton Abbey was Michelle Dockery, but I imagine she must have relished playing this part though that was so different from anything she's done before that's exactly why she wanted to play this role is because it's <laughs> very different from what she was played in the past and uh yeah a lot of the, this the the actors were attracted to the movie by watching the short film so when they sure. saw the short film they could see this, exactly how the movie would look and that's that's how it was able to get such a great cast for this movie was it always planned to be a hard r because i couldn't ever i couldn't imagine like a pg-13 version of this movie Yes, there was no uh, plan to make this a PG-13 because of the, ex it's it's not excessive violence, but it is a very, fairly violent movie. Well, it's it's stylized violence, yeah. right? I mean, it's it's not it's not necessarily realistic violence. Like it's 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 like it's I would say it's like like ultra violence, but not in not in a disturbing way. Like it was kind of like it's it's a heightened action movie kind of world. Yeah, I was a little bummed to see the cheese grater used in uh, the Evil Dead movie uh, this past year because that was oh, like one yeah. of the famous because we we use that quite a bit in our movie too. I was I was watching that well with actually with with my with my my wife and her friend and they were both 
cringing every when the cheese grater came out and screaming and covering their faces. <laughs> so and they yes. love they love but they loved that. You know, people like people like being afraid that way though, I think, or being grossed out that way. I think there's there's a certain appeal to that. If you can see something that really is shock value that you haven't seen before. Yeah. Yeah, it was that that would yeah in in uh, Evil Dead Rise, I think that was it was it was about five seconds, but the, hopefully ours was a little bit more. Well, it's never been used in a fight scene before, which I thought was great. Um, a movie like this, so is there a because I mean I I feel like it could go into like it's almost like a, you're building like a world and a universe in in this. Is there is there a potential maybe to go and do more in this world? afterwards at the last page of the script it's uh i believe it was a reference to girl kills world and so oh yeah well uh, that makes sense <laughs> yes <laughs> i can see that for sure uh it's interesting though because neither of your two leads are necessarily known for doing action movies so i think it's a lot i think it's a lot fresher when you put people in that you're not expecting i think if it had been somebody like you know jason statham or something like that like a guy that we've seen do this kind of movie before it would have a lot of it would have a much different feeling to it whereas i think these two kind of fresh faced people give you a sense of vulnerability you don't know if they're necessarily going to survive yes that, that's a, like one of the great things about casting this is it's definitely outside the box in terms of an action movie and uh yeah jessica and, and bill were, were although bill had just come off of uh john wick four but i'm trying to remember if he did much he, he doesn't did do some action it, though he doesn't okay. do anything yeah. at john wick that was that was kind of one of those things it was like uh he if I, I feel like if that movie was made now though after 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 this came out they probably would have yeah. it <laughs> And, and I think he's, uh, and I don't know how much action is in his next movie, it's The Crow. Which yeah, is, yeah, uh, of course. It should be, yeah. No, I could see him for sure turning into like an, an, an action yeah. pawn off of this. Um, is this a movie that you think is really meant to be seen with an audience though? Like it's a, like an audience participation movie. It does have that kind of cult midnight feel to it a bit. It, it definitely is a movie that you want to see with a crowd of people just because of just like the fun and the jokes and it, it, like with, with a crowd you'll just it gets the atmosphere gets it's much better in, in terms of just like having a communal experience.